the month began with a meeting held in the evening of the day of the battle 541 years ago. It was a combined fundraising event with our AGM and an evening of speculation about the course of history. Every group going through what they thought about the, how the world would be if the butterflies had flapped their wings differently and different things had happened in the world. That's all right. I'll say no more. Heads down and get on with it. Okay. <laughs> No, I think we're going on the flipper. We'd now like to introduce uh, and invite our chairman to give uh, a summary of our activities over the last year. These have, of course, been dominated by the Sculptures Project. After 14 years of endeavour, trying to bring the germ of an idea through to the point where we had all the planning applications in place, everything was ready and we could genuinely start to turn these sculptures into a reality has been a momentous occasion for the society and the realisation of one of its aims from the outset. It's a long, hard struggle, but uh, what we've achieved so far this year, I think has been quite amazing. It's quite astounding what a small town and a relatively small number of people can do. Um, so on that note, I'll hand over to Steve, our chairman. The sculpture, like uh, uh, Clive has mentioned, it's, um, it's, it's very odd, a, a change from something which is just going on. Occasionally you have a bit of an argument with some official at the council, and then it goes silent. It's just, it was just like the Wars of the Roses. It lasted about as long, <laughs> <laughs> had long periods of nothing happening, and then some frenetic activity. And now, but now we've reached the stage where a heck of a lot's happening. Um, out in the forest, all these huge boughs of trees are turning into sculptures. It's amazing, I think, that the, the goodwill there is towards this project, and the number of people, including me, who are very excited about the idea of seeing them in place. And we're now trying to work out how on earth we're going to do the unveiling, because it's going to go in a very big sheet. <laughs> <laughs> well, all we've got to do now, I think, is to draw the raffle. So, um, Bernie, pick one of these. These shocking pink this is slips. Like useful. 55. Oh. Meanwhile, back in the forest, you may think it easy for Phil to find suitable oak where he lives, but as he explains, and with the help of a new friend, it's not that simple. Commercially, a, a felling contractor, a woodland owner, would, once they'd decided to fell or thin a woodland out, they would simply take the commercial main butt, the main trunk, and they regard the rest as tops, uh, which is self-explanatory. Maybe some of the curved pieces would sell for architectural uh, timbers and whatever. But a lot of it basically is firewood. Okay, we're uh, still at Knox and uh, bluebells are out and the wild garlic. We've come to the edge of the wood and we're being invaded by sheep. We've got a very friendly sheep with us. I think he's a stray that's wandered into the farmyard and he's now eating the uh, maquette. What we want to illustrate at the moment is the is how we're using uh, the oak and selecting branches. Good. Good. Mainly ash in this woodland, but this is a single oak, and that's, as you know, that's the timber we've been looking for. It's probably not too old, this one, uh, maybe 100 years old, something like that. All the main branches are there, coming at the top of the main butt, the main trunk, where you're getting a lot of branching. If you can follow through as they, at the main branch point, there's that large, large main curved limb heading up, curving up to the left. That's the sort of branch we've been looking for. If I hold up the maquette, can you get that in shot? Whether it's possible to see a direct relationship, for instance, between that particular curve and down into the main trunk, here you'd see the thigh, shall we call it, of this back leg and the hock down into the hoof. I can see that that would fit precisely into that particular tree. It's not particularly ethical to say, chop that tree down, I want that particular branch. We have to be uh, 
responsible, I guess, and uh, just go for stuff that's coming down anyway. So yeah, that's uh, the origin of the origin of the materials. Yeah, origin of the species. So uh, bye bye from me and the sheep. Don't know. He's not got a name. He's got a number. But we'll find him a home. Mm -hmm.